everyone, Grand K for the Smoke Learning Channel. In this video, we're going to cover a major new improvement to action known as the Live Preview Viewer. We'll examine what it offers you and how to use it in Smoke 2017. This will definitely change the way you work in action, as well as give you a clear idea of your final renders, even while you interact in the composite. In order to understand what you're about to see, I just want to touch on how the previous version's result viewer used to function. For example, in the previous versions of Smoke, you could visualize your 3D composites as you interacted with action. However, to get a proper idea of the final render, you needed to press the preview button to see the final result. This would add anti-aliasing, motion blur, and other processing effects. So the result viewer was actually a 3D geometry viewer with some built-in processing effects. The issue that came up was that a lot of processing effects were not exactly accurate when working in the composite. So certain lighting effects would look one way in the composite, and then totally different when rendered. The reason for this is that the post-processing effects are pixel-based, unlike the old result viewer, which is geometry-based. Moving to Smoke 2017, a new Live Preview Viewer has been introduced which is pixel-based. In layman's terms, this is a what-you-see-is-what-you-get viewer, and will give you accurate representations with all processing effects. It's also much better and faster in so many instances. Now here is why. Here I have an action scene with some 3D objects, imagery, and post-processing effects. Now when you look at the result view of action, you are actually looking at the live preview by default. It actually behaves the same way as the old 3D view. You can interact with the scene, move objects around using their widgets, and orbit the camera. However, what you are seeing is a pixel-based version. In fact, this is what you will actually get when you render the composite. Even pressing the preview button will give you the same render result. The live preview gives you accurate rendering with all lighting effects and post-processing effects. This is also much faster to work with, because Action is rendering only the full frame of the composite and not the entire 3D environment. You can see this because the geometry will not be visible beyond the Action resolution. This also gets even faster if you toggle between full resolution and proxy view modes with Control p So there is definitely loads of benefits to using this new type of view. If you wish to toggle between the live preview and the original 3D geometry view, just press the 3 keyboard shortcut. At the bottom left of the viewer, you will be able to tell what view you are looking at when you toggle the viewer. Now as a result of this, there have also been changes to the 3D view. Firstly, this view is for the purposes of seeing 3D geometry. So you can zoom in as much as you like, and the zoom factor will not pixelate. However, because this is now solely used to view 3D geometry, all anti-aliasing and post-processing effects are no longer available in this view. In order to view any post-processing effects and anti-aliasing, you need to be looking at the live preview, which ultimately will be your final rendered result. So when you are looking at the 3D view, you will get a triangle indication to the right of the screen. This advises you that this does not represent your final render, and all post-processing operations are disabled. Just press 3, and you're back to the live preview. So switch to the Action Node Preferences, and when you turn on Motion Blur, you see your results instantly in the viewer. So you get a real idea of what you're going to get. Just remember that previously you had a high level of interactivity in the old 3D view, because all these post processes were only applied at the rendering stage. So if you turn all of them on, you can expect a slowdown in the live preview. For example, if you crank up motion blur too high, it could impact on performance. So you have the proxy view that I mentioned earlier with Control p but if you switch to the Adaptive Degradation menu and enable it, there is a specific section to disable certain post-processing in the Live Preview. 
This will help push your interactivity back up again if required. Obviously, performance is determined by what you have in action as well as the hardware you are using. Now the other massive benefit that the pixel-based live preview brings to Smoke 2017 is the ability to work in a contextual view with widgets. For example, I'll go back to the ConnectFX and set a contextual view further downstream in the node flow graph. So this is the result with all the processing nodes applied. I'll switch over to the contextual view with CONTROL-1 and now any node that you select upstream in the flow graph that is widget driven will display its icons in the contextual view. So I can select this blur node and even via the contextual view I can change the center point. And even if I went into action I could even select objects and make changes directly in the contextual view. And finally, if you are rotoscoping with the G-Mask you can also see and adjust your mask directly in the contextual view. It makes it easier to see how the roto blends in with the rest of the comp. The widgets are also available at the Timeline view when working with Timeline Effects and this is covered in the Timeline Effects Icons video for Smoke 2017. So in the next video, we'll take a look at another major improvement in action. How does render layers and render passes sound to you? All of that and more coming up. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Smoke Learning channel for future videos.